company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. the CEO of Caracal Gold, joins us today for a special feature on the company's flagship project. That's the Kilmapesa Gold Project in Kenya. Hello, Robbie. Thank you for joining me today. How are you? I'm very well and you, Mark. Thank you, for, uh, thank you for your time. Thanks for the invite. Yes, I'm looking forward to this, Robbie. I'm doing well. So we're going to focus on the presentation uh, and we're going to look really more at the the location of the project and the geology and the existing mine and the plans and the exploration upside and all all that nice stuff. So do you want to just start us off? Uh, you've got a slide there which, which is showing the location. Just tell us a bit about the, the project, where it is um, and what's significant about it. Sure. We're located in the Narok County of Kenya, southwest of Kenya. We are on the, we're just north of the Tanzanian border. Um, we're about 100 kilometers north of Mwanza, which is the center of the gold mining district in Tanzania, um, and we're the natural extension or the extension of the Tanzanian Greenstone Belt. Okay. So you're in the heart of the Greenstone Belt. Is that what we can see on the slide there, the, the, the green? Is that the Greenstone Belt? That, that, that's correct. Yeah. The Magori Greenstone Belt is the most prolific gold-producing region in Kenya. Um, it's been in production for, I guess, for over 100 years, um, lots of colonial activity when the colonials were here, lots and lots of artisanal activity at the moment. Um, and it basically extends from the rock going all the way west through the, um, the, through the Magori County, hence the name the Magori Greenstone Belt. And on the Magori side um, is where Red Rock have their licenses um, and also prolific artisanal activity in their area, lots of gold. Okay. So there's lots of gold in the area, lots of artisanals. The artisanals then, they are almost in some cases individual individual locals who are just out there fertling around looking for gold is that right yeah i mean they've, they've again they've, they've been doing it for decades that's mm. in their family how they've made their living for decades they scratch on the surface they scratch down maybe the first six eight ten meters and um, they they always targeting very high grade material so the quartz veins the the, the, the intersections or the interfaces with the courts and, 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 and the other surrounding areas. Um, I've, we've, we've sampled many artisanal workings within our license area. These boys are chasing nothing less than 10 up to 100 grams a ton of material. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, obviously there is a lot of gold in the area. What about more serious players, companies then in the area? Um, we or ourselves, we, we're the only... We, there's only two producing gold mines, commercial scale producing gold mines in Kenya. It's ourselves and a company called Karebi. Karebi are located about 300 kilometers north to us on the Kakamega um, trend, right up in the north. Then there's Shanta, who are probably the most serious exploration um, company in, in the country. They've got over a million ounces that they did that transaction with Acacia about 18 months ago. They've got tremendous exploration success. Um, and then our neighbour, uh, Red Rock Resources, they directly to the west of us, um, and, and 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 Andrew's very bullish on the potential of his project. Mm. So, would you say the area is is underexplored? Yeah, we draw the comparison all the time that the Kenyan um, Greenstone Belt region, from us all the way going up to Kakamega, where Chanta are, it's like being in Tanzania twenty years ago. Oh. Um, well, lots of colonial workings, lots of artisanals, but no modern exploration done. And ourselves, Red Rock and Shanta, have got the first movers into country. You know? We're the first companies coming in, applying modern exploration techniques. Shanta are drilling. Our drill rigs have actually arrived in country. They arrived a week early. We were expecting them on the 12th, and they got into port on Saturday. So before the end of the month, we're going to be drilling. So, yeah, we're very, very excited. We're a strong believer that... The, uh, over the next couple of years, maybe the next decade, there's going to be some serious gold mining taking place in Kenya. And we hope we've got one of the first mover advantages. Yeah, first mover advantage indeed. So you've got some drills that are arriving and you're going to do some exploration. This is to expand, I guess, from what is already the, the producing gold mine. Yeah, we've got two distinct um, programs that we're going to start at Kilimapesa. The Kilimapesa Hill, where, which is the current mine, where, we, we, where we're mining and producing ore for our processing plant at the moment. 
um, that, that the, both rigs were originally going to go onto the hill. And that was to expand the resource and, and also grow the confidence in the resource. So the original program was designed around that. But our exploration teams also were out there looking for large, open, pitable resources. Um, and we believe we found one in the Southern Mineralized Zone. So we pitched and gave our board a new strategy and a new budget. Diamond Rig is going to go onto the hill and um, our RC Rig is going to go onto the Southern Mineralized Zone. And we're going to have those two campaigns running in parallel. Okay, I see. So you can build on what is already an established and producing gold mine with a production plant. Is that, is that the plan really to expand on that and, and, and further afield? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I'm very, I mean, we know the hill extremely well. Um, and the program that we've laid out, we've had the independent consultant go through the plan that we've got in place. Um, and I'm, I'm very, very confident we're going to grow the hill north of a million ounces very fast. Um, the southern mineralized zone, we reported 40 meters at just under five grams per ton in, in, in the first trench. A lot of trenching is going on at the moment. Results are going to start flowing soon. Um, and it's the conversation I had with our head of exploration, Collins, is that, that the southern mineralized zone is drill ready. So it, it's going to be exciting times over the next couple of months. Okay, good. Well, do you want to move on to the next slide? Then I think this talks about the uh, environmental sort of framework. Is that right? To explain what? Um, what yeah. We'll... yeah, I mean, very, very importantly, it, it, it's sort of it's environmental and social and, and, and all rolled up into one. I think it's very important to note. You know, we came into country less than a year ago. The the mine had been on care and maintenance for a couple of months before COVID. Then during COVID, it was obviously shut down. We got to site, there were 10 employees. We, we're just under 500 employees now. So we've had a tremendous impact on, on, on the whole social makeup of, of the region. You know, the economic activity in the town where we are is buzzing. Um, there's plans to establish a bank in the town where we are because there's enough employees that we would bank that would use that bank. Um, so there's a tremendous impact that we've had on, 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 on the community from a social point of view. Um, we're involved in the clinic. We're involved in the local hospital, um, sponsoring various programs, sponsoring upgrades. Um, we're involved on the on, on the on the on the regulatory side. Um, you know, we've, we've we've assisted with um, refurbishing some of the, the government buildings and getting involved and assisting people on that, which then has a further impact on the social side. A big focus for us. Um, um, kind of spearheaded by Jason has been, we've got involved in, in a lot of the schools in the area, not only on the academic side, sponsoring sports fields, sponsoring sports equipment. We've established two computer laboratories, um, all that sort of stuff. So, so the mine and the energy and the people that we've brought is, you know, it's brought tremendous social benefit to, to, to the area. Okay. Um, on the, on, on the environmental side, we're very strictly policed by NEMA, which is the National um, Environmental Agency here in Kenya. Um, we do everything by the book, everything world class. We inspected, we permitted. Um, you know, safety goes without saying, safety first. I think all mining operations say that. So, no, we've, we've, we, we've made a strong commitment, a strong investment in, into the community, into safety, into health and the environment. We're very proud of ourselves. Okay. So you're starting very much from, uh, from, well, from a good starting position, really, which is, uh, yeah. is good to see. Okay, well, let's um, let's take a look a bit at the geology then. Now, I don't know how uh, technically minded uh, you are, but um, can can you explain about the geology that is in the area and and why it is is a good place to be to be mining for gold? Um, yeah, again, I mean, we smack bang in the middle of the Magori Greenstone Belt. So this is a, this is a belt that's been producing gold for over 100 years. Um, a significant amount of work was done before we acquired the asset. We acquired the asset just, over nine, just under 9 million tons, 2.4 grams a ton, giving us just under 700,000 ounces in jork resource already. Um, so, you know, that's... Um, Lots of exploration companies are, are, are aiming for that, and that's what we inherited. That's what we bought with gold. That. Um, so, yeah, uh, there's, there, there, there's our resource statement on the presentation. Um, I'm going to flip down to the next slide. Um, 
we, we, we immediately recognized the exploration potential outside of just the Kilimapesa Hill area when we got up here. Um, this, this potential had been well documented by the owners before Gold Platte, by Gold Platte, and now by ourselves and our, by our geological team. So um, a lot of this has been mapped. A lot of it has been actually drilled some of them even mined by the colonial guys, albeit on a very small scale, chasing very high grade. Um, so we recognize that exploration potential. We've walked it, we've done a tremendous amount of soil geochem sampling, trenching over the areas, confirming the data. Collins, um, who was part of the Acacia discovery team, has applied his mind to it and applied a different model to it, which we've now demonstrated as being successful in the southern mineralized zone. So, yeah, I mean, we, we, I've come out and publicly stated we want to be the largest ground holder in the Midori Greenstone Belt, which is the belt where we are. We, we recognize the potential. Um, we're going to start drilling it soon. We're going to start confirming up our models and our theories. And we, again, we've come out publicly and stated we, 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 we'll, we'll get over a million and a half ounces out of our license area during next year. I believe probably closer to 2 million ounces, and it'll grow further than that. So um, mm. we, we're a strong believer in the Magori Belt. We know and understand the geology well, um, and, and, and now, now, now we've got to prove that to the market through doing the work. Yeah, you've mentioned that a few times about getting to that over, over a million ounces, a million and a half ounces, and maybe even possibly 2 million. Just on the expiration upside then and, and the targets, what, what work has been done? You, you've mentioned um, trenching and soil sampling. Yeah, so um, we've gone in and, and, and we've analysed all the old data. Um, first thing that we would do is we, we, we've gone in and reconfirmed all of that old data ourselves. So we've gone into the same areas where the old boys were working or where, where Gold Platte had done some exploration. We've physically done the work again. If there was a trench, we've opened it up again, sampled again and compared the results. Um, if, if we were able to go down an old colonial shaft, if it was safe enough and go down and be able to sample, we've gone in done all of that sampling ourselves um we've obviously employed modern exploration techniques i mean um just being able to fly a drone to do your to do your survey work um to do your topographic survey all that sort of stuff so we've brought in all the the, 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 the modern niceties to have which makes it very fast for us to do um and 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 follow the gold guys you know we we've, we've come out publicly and said the southern mineralized zone um, seven and a half kilometers. A large degree of that has been mapped for us because we've got seven and a half kilometers of artisanal activity along that strike. Um, we've started towards the um, toward the western extension of our license area where, 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 where we cut that trench and we've announced those results. Um, but I mean, you can physically you can walk along that strike and identify each artisanal working, identify the geology, identify the model. So um, we've taken a very simple, very practical approach to it. Mm -hmm. And when the drills arrive then, do you, uh, do you already have a drilling program planned? And, and, and how, if you have, how have you, um, how have you identified the targets? What, what have been your, 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 your key priority targets and, and how have you identified them from the trenching? So, I mean, on the, on, on, on the hill, um, a lot of our a lot of our drilling on the hill is it's pretty well tested on the levels where we're mining. But we really want to test the the, the mineralization at um, at depth. So a lot of the the, um, the, the drilling on the hill is, is targeted at, at what resources lie under the current mining levels. So we're going to be drilling a bit deeper. We expect probably for the grade to improve and 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 for the width of the ore body to improve the depth. So it's that that's how the guys have designed that program. Um, on the southern mineralized zone, yeah, I mean, we've, we've, I forget how many kilometers of, 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 of the strike we've actually trenched across at the moment, but obviously what we're going to do is we'll start at trench one um, and we'll start drilling. We'll step out fairly wide, drill further along the strike. Good discovery. We'll then step back in and, and, and drill again. So it's a, yes, it's a, I'm not a geo, but they've presented the, the, the program to me. It all makes sense. It's very well thought, very well planned, budgeted. Um, all the prep work has been done, all stores constructed, all the spares and consumables and everything we need for running the rigs on site. The, 
the team of drillers arrived in Nairobi last night. They're flying to site this evening. Um, so it's just now to get the rigs cleared. They arrived on Saturday and get them to site. Okay. Okay. Well, let's have a look at the existing operations and the, the mine production. Um, it has been producing for a number of years, I believe, but you've really ramped it up. And as you've mentioned before, you've, you've got a lot of people now on the ground actually employed. So just, just give us a bit of a paint the picture for us on, on the mine production side of things. Sure. Um, to dispel any rumours from Andrew Bell's interview the other day, um, we don't run around on his property and buy tailings and scavenge gold from other people's areas. Um, we, we publicly came, came out and stated when we took the operation over, we inherited the gold plat model. And that's what gold plat were doing. Gold plat were buying tailings from artisanal workers and processing them through their plant. Um, we, we, we recognized right from the beginning, the future of Kilima Pesa is the mine. That's the sustainable model. That's what we can follow. And again, we came out publicly since January and we started investing first in making the mine safe because it hadn't been open for 18 months. Um, but then we had to get underground and we had to do a whole lot of drilling so that we understood the ore body and understood what was going on underground for ourselves which we did. So we do, and we do understand, and we do know what's going on underground in that whole body. Um, within the group, we've all been involved in deep level underground gold mining. We've all been involved in mining at many stages through our careers. So we've applied all of those skills and everything. And, and we've invested in the mine from January going through to now. Okay. And there are some pictures there we can see of, of some of the operations and, and things going on underground. And then the, the, the slide after that, you have a sort of a diagram um, of, I don't know, is, is that the hill you're referring to? But it's certainly where the, uh, where the, the, the mine shafts are, is that right? Yes, that's Kelly Mapesa Hill. So it's not really a shaft, it's an edit. We come in from the side of the hill, so we don't actually go in and go, uh, and go down the shaft. We've got four edits, very cleverly named edit A, B, C, and D. Um, and it A's at the top of the hill, and then you work your way, and, and then you work your way down. So we work in all four levels. Um, all four levels are fully equipped, rail, bobcats, you, 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 you name it. Um, our, in, order, in order to hit our, our current production levels, each month as we're progressing and we're getting more experience, we're raising the levels and raising the tonnages and the requirements coming out of the mine. Um, month on month, August, to September through to October, we were averaging over 25% increase each month in production out of the mine. We're expecting another 25% increase out of the mine again this month. Um, and, and that's to ensure that we keep feeding our hungry plants. You know, um, we, we keep ramping up the plant capacity and it's got to be matched by what comes out of the mine. So we, we, we don't... We don't run around buying tailings from other people. We feed our plant with all that we mine. Right. Okay. And there's still significant amounts of gold in there to come out, do you believe, as well? Oh, massive. We, we, we haven't scratched the surface. I mean, um, the Kilimapes is a small mine. I mean, uh, we, 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 we processed, during September, we processed 12,000 tonnes a month. It's a small mining operation. So it's, it's not a big mining operation. Okay. It has potential to become a medium-sized or a large mining operation. But through continual investments in what we're doing, um, we, we'll grow it and grow it and grow it. Okay. So... The hill will form a part of the future of this mine. Even if the southern mineralized zone turns out to be a large open pitiful resource, Kilimapesa Hill will still have a role to play in the future of the mine. Right. Okay. Okay. So this makes the company cash flow positive then? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay, that's good. And you've got the, the Kilimapesa Hill, which is the underground mine at the moment, which is giving you that feed for your, your processing plant and, of course, the, the cash flow. And then the, well, the long life of Kilimapesa, as you just alluded to, but also then the exploration potential upside of developing new, de finding new deposits and developing further mines within the area. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Kilimapesa Hill is a, is a narrow steep dipping um, ore body. Mm -hmm. uh, Kilimapesa Hill, the more we drill, the more we understand about it, the more selectively we can mine. But the key is to get the highest grade, as much of the highest grade ore possible that we can out of the hill 
to feed the plant. Okay. But we continue to work and continue to try and understand the whole body better and better and better. Okay. Well, let's just finish off by taking a look at the processing plant then. It does look like there is significant infrastructure there. So, again, just, just give us an idea of, of the processing plant uh, and what it's capable of. Sure. I mean, it's a very conventional crush mill CIL gold plant. I mean, it's some, typically something that you'd find in Tanzania or West Africa or South Africa or Australia. There's just com it's stock standard technology. Um, when we when we came up here um, during August of, of, of last year, the, the maximum capacity the mill could run at, and the mill's the heart of the plant, basically. They, the belief was it could run at a maximum of 180 ton per day. And that was, as I said previously, gold plat were buying and treating tailings from artisanal producers. Um, yesterday we ran 435 tons through the mill. So we've we we Every day we're learning more and more and more about this plant. I mean, this slide says the milling capacity is 350 ton per day through the wall mill. Um, we, no, no rocket science. We've, we've, we've put, we brought in a bigger motor a couple of months ago. Um, we put variable speeds onto the mill motor now. Um, we, 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 we changed some pulleys over the weekend. We started running the mill at a slightly faster speed. And now we can comfortably because we've got the new crushing plant and screening plants ahead, and we're feeding a nice consistent material into the mill, we've run it up to 450 ton per day. I'm not saying we're constantly going to do it every day, but we've tested it to that capacity. So we're always tinkering, trying to find ways to improve the capacity, improve the recovery, and, and, and to drive the costs down. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, a key. I mean, we, we, it's obviously it's a, it's, a, it's a big focus for us. Um, the, the other thing I, I just... To, to there, there's so that everybody understands, and I think it's a case of 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 key of me of our, of our team continuing to tell the story and update the market of where we are, etc. So within our plant, um, we've 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 got the milling plant, which we call plant one, and then we have a dedicated tailings plant, which we call plant two. It's not a new plant that we constructed; it was taking a section of the old plant redesigning it and reconfiguring it to treat tailings. So, and the reason we did that is we were approached by the government in Kenya because there's so much artisanal activity happening within our belt and especially across in, in the next door area where, where Andrew has his um, exploration project in, in the boy. And these guys are producing what we call a leach tailings product. So it's, it's a tailings They've leached it in cyanide, but they've got no environmentally proper way of disposing of these tailings. And they literally are dumping tailings on surface that's been treated with cyanide. So the, gov the, the county of Morocco and the county of Magori, um, the, the, the environmental agency has been looking for a way of safely removing that from the environment um, and, and putting it into, into a properly designed tailings dam safe tailings dam, children not playing on it, cattle not walking on it, etc. And we found a way to profitably extract gold out of that tailings as well as clean up the environmental mess and then store it. So we, we, we have what we call plant two, which is the leach tailings plant. Um, it produces about 20% of our, of our monthly production at an extremely low cost. The feed is for free. We don't pay anything for the material. We pay a bit of transport to get it to site. And it goes into an existing circuit. So we, we, have, we have the milling plant and, and, and we have that and we have that plant. And that's what we're currently running with at the moment. Um, we then have obviously, and, and again, in a, in, a, in, a, in a normal operation, you would do the exploration, you would do the feasibility study, which would give you the optimum mining size, plant size, etc. We would bring in the EPC contractor, build the plant, and then run it. Um, we inherited a lot. A lot of it wasn't ideally sized. A lot of it wasn't correctly engineered. We learning as we go, etc. A lot of we we we've we we've defined a lot of low grade ore. When we're mining, there's there's a lot of low grade ore which for us is uneconomic to treat through our mill. But through our experience having built and operated heat beach plants, 
in South Africa, in Zimbabwe, in West Africa, et cetera. We've now run the test work, um, constructing a test, test heat leach pad, and we'll add a third part to the plant where we will now heat leach our low grade material. Not going to be a massive contributor. It will probably only produce, give us another 10% onto our production, but extremely low cost production because we've mined the material already. We've just got to crush it down to the correct size, put it on the heap, and then, and then water it with the cyanide. So we're trying to be very practical, we, and we're engineering and constructing as, as we go to, to, to build the Kilima Pesa puzzle, as somebody said to me this morning. Indeed. But we're making gold and profitable. Making gold and profitable. Good. Okay. We'll just get a final thought from you then, Robbie. What are you looking forward to in the near term in terms of activities that are going on? Of course, the drilling, I, I guess, is, uh, is one of them. I'm very excited about the drilling. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm super confident in the hill. Um, for me, being in the industry for as long as I have, to be able to announce that Kili Mapes has got over a million ounce resource is, is very, very important. I think that's a big stepping stone. I think people look at you slightly differently once you're over a million ounces. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously that going from a million to a million and a half and two, and once you're north of two million, you're a serious player. Okay. Um, the Southern Mineralized Zone is extremely exciting for me. If we continue to prove up Collins's model um, and, 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 and there is a medium or a large open principal resource, that's a complete game changer. I mean, that, that literally is, is you know, if, if, if we can prove up a, a million ounces at four grams a ton, open pitable, which they've done many, many times in Tanzania, it, it, it's, a, it's a game changer for, for, for Kilima Pes. It's a game changer for Kenya, um, which is very, very exciting. And, and I'm very proud and very excited about the work that the guys are doing. Uh, we've come out publicly. We've said we need to get to 700 ton per day processing rate through our plant stably We've come out publicly. We had record numbers in October. We averaged 492 ton a day. Um, we did 835 tons yesterday. We broke a record yesterday. Um, the day before we didn't have such a great day. We didn't do 835 tons, but we didn't do, we did over 500. So it's getting better and better each day. And, and, and I'm very excited and very proud about what the guys are doing. Um, and, and the market will soon start to see it in our results. I mean, and it's, we're in our first full quarter as a listed um, minor explorer um, and feasibility study developer. So we kind of all wrapped up into one. And I, I'm excited for the market to start to understand our story and understand our potential. Um, how do you, to value a, a pure two, to value a company that's got a pure two million ounce resource, you can do. To value a company that has got a two million ounce resource but is busy doing their feasibility study, you can do. But how do you value a company that's going to have a two million ounce resource and is producing and the resource is growing? It's got heat bleach and the milling plant. So I think we're an exciting company. So yeah, we're very excited. And then obviously. Um, We've, 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 we've got this pending acquisition, which, again, is going to be very, very exciting news. And before, before long, before the end of November, we should all know about this. Okay, before the, end, before the end of November for the pending acquisition. Okay, and I, I hate to ask you for a timeline on the, when you want to get to that million, but do you, um, do you have a, an idea in mind? We'll, we'll be over a million ounces before, before the end of the second quarter of next year. Before the end of the second quarter of next year. Okay. Well, Robbie McRae, the CEO of Caracol Gold, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, Mark. Much appreciated. Nice to talk to you. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like, or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.